What's going on guys? Matt over here with Lethal Garage and today I want to talk about a subject that I've seen pop up all over the internet as of late and it's kind of funny because I've seen it pop up in multiple different places whether it's been Twitter, Instagram messages or in Facebook groups and you guys are, some of you guys who are in the face group, group, Facebook groups I'm in are pretty brutal to people. Um, but it's about performance chips. Now, these have been on the market as long as computers can been updated and make adjustments. And you know what? Some performance chips have worked or they provide an upgrade to the vehicle. Um, it's been proven by plugging it in. It basically installs, for lack of better words, a new tune to your vehicle. Um, and uh, at least in some of them, uh, and it can provide power. I've seen some actually just plug and play on the dyno in person gain power. Now, does that mean every chip on the market is gonna do that? Oh, heck no. No, 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 no. Now, for these cars, yes, there's an ECU, yes, they're programmable, but they're programmable based on a real tune. You need to tune your vehicle by a professional professional tuner. Uh, can you hook up a chip and change characteristics of the vehicle? Yes. Are you going to gain power out of that? No. So I can tell you right now, a stock car sitting just as it is from GM, if you go down to a professional tuner, the most horsepower they will be able to eke out of that car at max is maybe 10 to 15 horsepower. Maybe. Usually it's a little bit lower than that. That's just tuning the car as it sits, no add-ons, no upgrades, no nothing. Now, sure, you can put an exhaust, headers, cold air intake, intake manifold, all that other stuff, and get a tune, and you will see a power increase because basically all those items alone are increasing airflow, which in tune can allow a tuner to dial that in to make use of that higher, you know, CFM. Uh, or airflow and so will a performance chip do that no no it will not will a professional tuner do that yes and honestly for a couple hundred dollars more you can bring your car down to a local tuner and have them tune your vehicle properly so you're not going to be running lean you're not going to be running whatever it's going to be dialed in perfect for the scenario of your vehicle now, you can go to any tuner anywhere, depending on what model year car you drive will depict how much it costs. The 16s are actually a little bit cheaper to tune than the 17s and 18s, because the 17s and 18s, the ECU has to be sent in to unlock, and that costs more points for HP tuners. So if you guys aren't familiar with how that works, um, HP tuner charges your tuner um, points, and those points cost money. And every time they unlock a car, um, it opens up the ability to tune it. So, and the nice part about the 16s is they're not locked. It's an unlocked ECU, so they don't have to spend those extra credits. So it's a little bit cheaper, but um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Don't buy performance chips for your car. And definitely don't buy performance chips and then tell people that your car has 50 or 100 more horsepower or whatever, because it doesn't. It literally does not. So. Performance chips are a waste of time and money. Uh, specifically, speaking in a sense for the Camaro, um, just don't buy it for the sixth generation Camaro. You're just, you're probably doing more harm to your car than good if it is changing anything. And I would almost bet it's not changing anything. So, and I know some of you guys out there will be like, oh, I plugged it in, it feels like I got more power. That's called the butt seat dyno. And uh, that's not real gains. Um, that's just, it's in your head. It's easy to get in your head how your vehicle feels and not feels. And it's one thing I've struggled with, specifically with suspension and whatnot. And the only way I've been able to really prove out how my new suspension has been working better is I've been able to take, there's one corner in Marietta um, off Butterfield stage that I take and I've hit it so many times with my car with the stock suspension then I had the ZL1 suspension, and then I did the BMR suspension, and uh, you know, hitting it so many times over and over and over and over again to what you feel your car's limits are, and then when you put the, the better stuff on, or the supposed better stuff on, and then you take that corner at 
10, 15, 20 miles an hour faster and it feels like it did previously with your other stuff at those limits, you know it's doing something better. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's my rant today. Performance chips, don't buy them. Just don't, save your money. If you want more power, seriously, just go get your car tuned. And yeah, there is the issue of warranty, but you know, once your car's 10,000 miles in, you don't have motor problems, you're probably not gonna have motor problems. That's not guaranteed, but you're probably not. And um, yeah, just don't do the performance chips, please. I beg you. But, thanks for checking out this video, guys. Let me know what you think about performance chips. Do you think, uh, you think I'm crazy? Do you think they actually do something? Have you used one where that's proven to be better? I can tell you right now, the ones I've seen, they do crap. So, yeah. If you like this video, smash that subscribe button. If not, likes, comment, shares are appreciated. Check out Lethal Swag down below and Lethal Synthetics. If you need oil, I get you the best prices ever. Uh, but until next time or next video, I'll see you on the road.